Banished to Another World, Chapter 3, The Yonji Tribe Yanmu received a scoop of water. He resisted swallowing it in one go and drank slowly. While Yanmu was drinking the water, the fierce man spoke to that brownie man with the protruding belly, Fat Doc, who was coming over and took something from the straw rope on his waist before handing it over to the brownie man. Fat Dog nodded and stuffed the item away before he went inside the straw shed and picked up a seriously wounded beast that resembled a dog with a broken limb. He went ahead and cut open the beast's belly. The man looked at Yanmo, who drank the water from the wooden scoop. He took the wooden scoop away and filled it with the blood from the beast's neck and handed it back to Yanmo. Drink! Drink the blood of the beast? Well, this is also a supplement to the body, a way of making up the depleted salt and nutrients in the body. Yanmo endured the nausea. He silently held the wooden scoop and drank the blood of the beast that was inside. He doesn't know if it was because this body was accustomed to this type of diet. Yanmo found that although there was a psychological constraint, he did not feel nauseous or queasy. During this time, the man went to pick up the leaves of the sarsium plant and gave them to Yanmo. Wiping his lips, Yanmo expressed his sincere gratitude to the man. It was still the same man who pulled his hair, nonetheless, but he thanked him. The man grabbed Yanmo's arm and rubbed his broken leg before changing the bone shackled into a straw rope. Yanmo thanked him in his heart. He had been shackled and it was extremely uncomfortable. If the man dared to take him away, he will spit if he's not good. It was uncomfortable being pulled by the armpit, but Yanmo endured the pain as he watched the surrounding scenery while being tugged along. This is not a harmonious tribe was Yanmo's first impression. In the square, the man only spoke two words to that fat dog. The man and women around didn't even bother sparing him a glance, hence no one greeted him. From the square, Yanmo could see a very large fence. The tribesmen lived in tents made of animal hinds and the fences acted like a plant housing. There was dirt in the middle that can accommodate two carriages and tents on either side of the dirt road. Some people were at the mouth of the tent and on the dirt road, but Yanmo didn't see anyone who was talking to their neighbors or anyone who attempted to talk to the fierce man. Most of the pedestrians were walking while the residents of the tents were busy themselves with various activities. The square was in the middle of the fence. The tents south of the square are quite simple and small, while the tents north of the square were larger and methodically arranged. The man did not work for long and Yanmo was dragged onto another path. Yanmo sneaked a glance at a nearby tent. It was better than the other tents and it befits a king with warriors in leather skirts guarding the door. That place of residence seems to be a gentle mountain shack. Yanmo guessed that the foot of the mountain was the residence for the poor and the slaves. The higher along the mountain, the higher the household status. The man headed towards home shortly after passing the square. Obviously, he has a status in the tribe. Yanmo observed all the way. After he turned from a path, starting from the first row of tents along the big dirt road, the man's tent was the last one in the fourth row. The spacing of each row of tents was symmetrical, much like an army barracks, but the men and women who were engaged in front of the tents are average without any distinction. Most of the people here only used either a leather skirt or a grass skirt to cover their bottom. Even the women have bare upper body. The children were running around as bare as the day they were born. Few old people were also naked. The tent area weren't completely quiet. The children's screams and that of the adults could be heard. From time to time, there will be some screams coming from inside the tents. Yunjan, weren't you talking about bringing some meat? 
was what is this finally someone greeted the man the man who was named yun chan took yun mo to the door of his tent before he replied the meat is not dead so i had to bring it back walking towards them was a man who was slightly shorter than yun chan he also had a tattoo on his face because of their position yun mo clearly saw the large twin stones hanging under the man's leather skirt as well as the big stick swaying freely bring that back a slave is it useful while it is hot like that the man poked yun mo's face with a blatant disappointment even if it's a boy it cannot do much in terms of work yun chan opened his tent he pushed the curtain aside and casually said he does not need to be exchanged free slave since it is free then it is all right i came looking for something to take with you the man changed the subject wait a minute yun chan bypassed yun mo he took the scooper from the big stone tank from outside the tent dragged yun mo to the side of the stone tank and poured water on his injured leg yun mo was dodged back to reality by the cold water and couldn't help but groan yun chan didn't even look at him and continued to pour water on the mites and his claws hands went straight to the wound ah yun mo screamed yun chan didn't care if he was in pain he had a parasite and he stank he shouldn't enter his tent like this i will call my slave to help you clean him up the man gazed at the other end and shouted at the next door carting come over a female slave with nothing on her body came out from the next tent make him clean do not waste water yes darren the slave of unknown age saw the scoop on the ground next to yun chan yun chan saw the slave took over cleaning yun mo and was happy to be lazy he beckoned to the man come on the man followed yun chan to the tent before pulling the curtain down there were many things in the tent the innermost place has few large stones that serves as cornerstones straw and far made the beds and a big square stone table in the middle there were no stools so people have to sit cross-legged around the stone table there were two spears on the wall of the tent and several sharp bones hung around the place along with several leather skirts there were piles of bones and far stacked up near the corner of the curtain yan mo wasn't sure if it was these things that caused the strange smell inside the tent why the man asked as he sat cross-legged yun chan understood what the other party was asking he smiled and said because he's hot like this that he does not directly kneel but smiles at me this kid must be a very patient slave in the future is it the man thought as he glanced at yun chan's left yun chan's eyes slightly drooped before lifting them up again what are you looking for the expression on the man's face immediately changed and he looked at him with anger the tribe has called for the third rank warriors to the chiefs and elders they have asked to expand the hunting ground the sites they asked for overlaps with others hunting areas if the elders agree we would have to fight for it but those people do not have much oil and water on site and we lack people the chance of wrestling a high level beast is even harder than becoming a third rank fighter Yunja knocked on his knee. It is not just the upgrade; it is a problem to get enough food for the winter. That is not a problem. You are aware that it is better to keep living food. If that one cannot live, then you can kill him in winter. As your exclusive slave, you at least do not have to divide his meat into the tribe. You came looking for me. Do not tell me it is to complain about my slave. Is there something else? complain i came looking for you to ask if you want to the man leaned over yun yun chan his voice kept getting lower and lower at the mouth of the tent after yun chan entered the tent yan mo immediately put a smile on kao ting sister what do you think i learned healing from a priest kao ting was a very gentle female slave she looked at yan mo's face contorted in pain and drenched in cold sweats she can't help but reach out and wipe the sweats for him 
you are a disciple of a healing priest, then how come you were brought back as a slave? I am a salt mountain people. Our family has been robbed by the Ji people for the salt cave. Salt cave. Then we were attacked by wild beasts during the migration. Needless to say, Kao Ting has already understood why Yan Mo was here. Uh -huh. I am a salt mountain person. Our family has been robbed by the Ji people for the salt cave. Then we were attacked by wild beasts during the migration. Needless to say, Kao Ting has already understood why Yan Mo was here. Her eyes showed sympathy and helplessness to his fate. What is your name? My name is Yan Mo. Yan Mo? Then I will call you Little Mo. You can call me Kao Ting. Sister Kao Ting, Yan Mo completely ignored his previous age and tried his best to take advantage of this body's age. Sister, can you help me burn a pot of boiling water? I want to use it. Yan Mo propped up and sat with the help from Kao Ting. There was a fire pit and there was water placed outside the tent. For fire outbreak prevention, the fire pit for cooking is next to the water tank. The pot was not a wok but a large stone hollowed out with ground stones. It looked heavy but Yan Mo saw Kao Ting effortlessly place the stone pot on the fire pit. Sister, is there a knife here? Yes, you wait, I will bring it. The stone knife that has been carefully polished is a valuable item and was not placed outside the tent. Sister, wait, is there? Whatever Yanmo wanted to say was swallowed back in his mouth. He didn't think they would understand the word needle. Kao Ting asked, what else do you need? Wood, if there are no planks, then sticks will do. How big do you want it? I'll go back and look for it. There is less wood here. If I have to use the big chunk of wood, then I have to ask for Darren's permission. Branches are okay too, Yan Mo said. He roughly made a plan. He estimated the length and width of the wooden sticks he needed and he also asked for a fixed straw from Kao Ting. Give me some salt. There is not enough. Darren must permit it. Kao Ting was able to look for the wooden sticks with ease, but because Yan Mo also needed salt, she did not dare to do it without permission. She could only whisper outside the tent to call her own master. The man came out with Yun Chan and heard what Yan Mo needed. Yun Chan took the salt in the tent himself. The man left Kao Ting to Yun Chan and went to another tent. Yunjan gave the salt to Kao Ting and took the spear when he went out. The sky was not yet dark. He wanted to go out and see if you could get some extra prey and fruits. In addition, he brought Yan Mo back so he had to hand over 20% of the meat he hands to the horde in order to compensate for the extra mouth to feed called Yan Mo. Kao Ting told Yan Mo things as they were waiting for the water to boil. The warrior of this tribe is up to fourth rank warrior. The fourth rank warrior can be a tribal chief. The third rank warrior must take turns hunting and acquiring the prey for the tribe according to the weight assigned by the tribe. In their free days, the warriors can go out and search for the prey themselves. If they find something, they will give 20% to the tribe and the other 80% can be kept by the hunter for themselves. It may look good, but the beasts around the horde were very powerful. They could be hunted, but never by a single warrior. And there were many beasts in the nearer range. The warriors were divided into hunting grounds according to their level. The lower the level, the fewer the beasts in the hunting ground. Sometimes warriors who do not rotate will join forces to go hunting. In order to ensure the survival of the entire tribe, the places they can go can only be with then the hunting range provided by the tribe or the strange places that aren't assigned. Civilians without combat power were responsible for all other chores. The civilians without power referred here were the old and the weak. Slaves are divided into two categories, one belonging to the tribe, 
these slaves usually do the hardest and the most tiring work they are the ones who are kept to be eaten they are generally responsible for farming grazing skin tanning grinding stone etc sometimes they are used as a reserve food in the winter when food was scarce the warrior above the second rank can have their own slaves a second rank warrior can only have one slave while a third rank warrior can have two slaves the higher the level of the warrior the more slaves and wealth they can have the slaves belonging to a warrior are treated better than the tribe slaves if you encounter a benevolent master you can even live better than a civilian but if you encounter a bad master only misery awaits for you the rations distributed by the tribe do not go to the slaves if the warriors want to have slaves they must feed them on their own my master is called yun diao only the warriors in the tribe can have a tribe's surname our tribe is called yunji tribe it is said that this tribe has been living in this grassland and the margin of the desert for hundreds of years it is one of the larger tribes nearby you said you are from the salt mountain tribe i know your family is bigger than our original tribe we have transactions with your tribe you will probably see them during the trading day in the future yanmo understood kaoting's good intention as she reminded him yanmo thought that as long as g people didn't come then he wouldn't care for them are you using herbs kaoting curiously asked yes his master yunjan did not have equipment suitable for grinding work he could only find something to make up for it he asked for a small pot, stone pot there is no concept of dish here and a ba- big bone stick used was to crush the sarsiam plant into the stone pot the water was boiling yanmo placed the stone knife inside to sterilize it the stone knife was sterilized inside the salt water yunjan provided coarse salt containing lots of minerals which was yellowish black this salt cannot be used directly even when it is cooked it has to be filtered he then used the sterilized bone knife to scrape the pus and dead flesh from the wound including the worms that ate the rotting tissue yanmo was in so much pain that his hands were shaking but no one here could help him kaoting didn't dare help when she couldn't even bring herself to look at the wound they are desert land people and not everyone can be a healer not only should healers be used to seeing blood but they should also know to remain calm hand stability is the most important why did you boil the stone knife in the water kaoting watched yanmo use the stone knife to scrape and to cut through the wound this infection yanmo answered he scraped off all the dead flesh and dirt attached on the wound he was about to wash the wound with filtered salt twice boiled water when he saw the white light appear again in his right palm yanmo looked up at kaoting and kaoting who was focused on grinding the bars on the stick did not notice the change in his palm